Hello everyone, welcome to another video in which I'm gonna talk about the image quality that the Canon EOS R5 is able to deliver. And in this video we're gonna look at ISO invariance or how much you can lift the shadows. So this is something which Canon cameras uh, yeah, weren't very good in the past, so all the others you were able to underexpose, bring up the shadows and get very clean results. So this is what I'm gonna look at, compare it again against the 5DSR and yeah, hopefully the um, results will be a little bit more positive than in the last video where I looked at long exposure noise and hot pixels. So yeah, there actually the R5 didn't perform so well. So if you're interested in that, um, watch my last video. Also, I learned from the response that this is a use case which is not very relevant for many of you and that's okay. But for me as a landscape photographer who starts shooting an hour before sunrise, for example, uh, in very dark conditions, it's important to be able to take long exposures. And yeah, I was a bit shocked at first at the performance, but thankfully long exposure noise reduction will work. Also what I found, if you kind of underexpose and then bring up the shadows, so something which we're gonna look at now in this video, this also works on long exposures if you have long exposure noise reduction active. So you have to double basically the exposure time because of taking the dark frame, but you can get along with underexposing and by this yeah, shortening the exposure and then just lifting the shadows to get a clean exposure. And yeah, if this is too theoretical, I'll also have a article, a very detailed article on those topics in a few weeks when I did a little bit more testing. Yeah, but for now, I think enough talk. Let's look at yeah, some images again, do some pixel peeping and yeah, see how the R5 performs if you want to lift the shadows or yeah, how the dynamic range is actually. So let's start today's video with a practical example. And here I have a photo which I took a few years ago in Spain. And as you can see here in the histogram, the dynamic range the 5DSR has was actually just enough to get everything except for just a little bit of the dark tones here. I have just a little bit of clipping. So now what I would typically do in such situations in the past with a 5DSR and before that with a 5D Mark II, I would always try to get additional exposure. So doing bracketing. And the reason for that is what I'm gonna show you also in a minute. With the older Canons, it was always hard to lift the shadows, even though you don't have much clip values, lifting the shadows would often introduce a lot of noise, rendering an image unusable basically. And HDR is always possible if you don't have too much moving subjects in a photo. So here, for example, I have the leaves which were shaking a bit and there it's always hard to do multiple exposures because you can't cleanly blend them. So for an image like that, it's important to have a camera which can deliver proper dynamic range and also that it's possible to lift the shadows and get clean results, which is also a result of having more dynamic range. Let's first see how I would have to process this image. So I would likely put in one additional stop of exposure and then counter it by bringing down the highlights. So to counter the clipping of the highlights, I would also lift the shadows just a touch, maybe bring up the blacks and the whites down. Now this looks properly exposed. Now when I zoom in, you see the problem. Here in the very dark tones, let's go into two to one. You see there's just a lot of noise and also um, this seems to be part where we also have some clipping so we don't have any detail. The noise is basically hiding all the detail also in those areas here. Um, lifting the shadows clearly didn't do much good for this image and for the final image I had additional exposures. I did a lot of selective blending and stuff so a lot of work was needed to come away with a proper result which I can now print very large which looks fantastic but yeah the work necessary to get to this result was quite a bit. Now let's look at some test shots I did with the R5, which basically try to recreate this use case in the office. Um, so what I have here, I have five photos which all look equal in terms of exposure, but what I actually did as a test, let's have a look at the develop module. This photo here, it was shot at ISO 100 and it was underexposed. So if I bring down here the exposure, which I already brought up to plus four, it looks like this. So a very similar use case to the photo I just showed you. Just here I don't have highlights, but we were interested in the shadows. So if I bring it up to 
plus 4, it resembles exactly the same photo which I took at ISO 1600. Same settings in terms of f-stop and exposure time, but the ISO raised by 4 stops. And what I wanted to test is the ISO invariance, which means basically you can bring up digitally the exposure in Lightroom, for example, and get an equal result or roughly an equal result to if you had shot the photo at a higher ISO, basically boosting the exposure already in camera. So this so-called ISO invariance was never something which worked very well with Canon. So I'm not sure how it was with the 5D Mark IV. I think it was already improved, but not as you have it with the Nikon cameras or Sony cameras. So what we now do, we compare the boosted one with the ISO 1600 image. And yeah, what we're interested in is how the noise actually looks in comparison. And if the camera is ISO invariant or close to ISO invariant, the noise should look roughly the same. So let this just finish loading. And now up here, you don't see much of a difference, but I intentionally photographed here the dark uh, monitor surface. And you see even there, lifting four stops is roughly equal in terms of the produced noise as already raising the ISO in camera. So I would say from this test up to four stops, which is by far more than I would ever lift an exposure or bring up the shadows, but up to four stops, the camera I'd say is roughly ISO invariant, at least in my test here. Now it's important to also compare it to a properly exposed photo, which I shot at ISO 100. And there you see, this is still preferable. So here on the left side now is the photo shot at ISO 100, properly exposed right from the start. So I left the ISO at 100 and instead increased the exposure time. So this is much cleaner and actually it's preferable. So ISO invariance is important, but you shouldn't always underexpose your images now and just raise the exposure. Try to get a proper exposure. It can come in very helpful if you already cover the complete range. So you use exposed to the right, on which I have another video. So try to push your histogram as far to the right as possible without clipping any highlights. And yeah, then if your histogram still covers the whole range, you can work with lifting the shadows and not get much noise. And for this, the R5 is very good actually, much better than the 5DSR. So if I do this comparison for the 5DSR, where I did the exact same result, let's have a look if I would raise the 5DSR by four stops, how this would look. And now you see a completely different result. So here on the left, this is raised by four stops. And yeah, here on the right, it's when I shoot already at 1600 ISO. So clearly this camera is not as ISO invariant as the R5. So let's see how ISO invariant it is. So I also shot one at ISO 400 and raised it by just two stops instead of four to equal out with the ISO 1600 exposure. And now this looks much closer. So I think from this test, I would say with a 5DSR, I could raise it by roughly two stops and get equal results as if I had shot at a higher ISO. But yeah, with the R5, I can easily do so with four stops. So it's basically doubling the performance in this regard, which is very nice. And I should maybe say at least doubling the performance here because if we look at the ISO 400 shot, it in the normal exposure wasn't as far to the left as the R5 shot, which I lifted. And you don't have so many shadows here. So sure enough, this monitor is very dark, but all the rest is already located in this range, in this first third or first half of the histogram. So lifting something from there it's actually easier or was always easier also with the 5DSR than studying the lifting of the shadows if everything is as far to the left as in this case. So it's not a linear use case for the 5DSR, while for the R5 it seems much more linear, the behavior, how you can lift the shadows. And this is great to work with because you get much more predictable results if you expose correctly and then go into post. You know what you get if you have exposed correctly without any clipping shadows, any clipping highlights, then you can use the complete range of the histogram, lift shadows, bring down highlights and get very clean results. Whereas with older cameras from Canon, this wasn't necessarily possible. And I always needed to take bracketed exposures to be on the safe side. 
And since we're already here and have an ISO 1600 shot for both the R5 and the 5DSR, let's quickly compare how the ISO performance has improved. I'll have a separate video on that where I go more into the details and really see how much it improved, if it was a stop, if it was less, if it was more, but let's just have a quick peek and see if there was an improvement. And yeah, here on the left, you see the R5 on the right, you see the 5DSR, yeah, it's clearly cleaner already. You can notice that also up here in the detailed parts, which are quite bright, you don't see so much of a difference actually, but yeah, it's there. So the 5DSR shows more noise and you especially see this in those areas where you have colors. So there's much less noise in the R5. So yeah, that's also reassuring. ISO performance is also improved. We get now ISO invariance or nearly so much better in this regard. A lot of things will be easier you take photos in high dynamic range situations if you have to use higher ISO to get shorter exposures for example because you have some movement in leaves or other elements of the photo so that's great yeah, and it's good to have something positive also to weigh out the first test where I had focused on the negative now we have some positive and I'll have more tests I'll also have a test on the resolution and I'll also follow up with some practical videos where I use the R5 to take some nighttime photos, where I use high ISO to capture the stars, where I try to create star trails, for example, where I need several longer exposures. And yeah, there I can again see if heat is really an issue as I was suspecting from my long exposure test, but surely there will be workarounds. So I really have to use the camera now, use it in the field and see how it actually performs. But still those tests in the lab are important because only then I know already when I'm out in the field, what the camera can do. Because what I don't want to happen is to go somewhere, shoot a great sunset or some great light, then get home and see that the images are unusable because I didn't use the camera properly, which happened for me in Hong Kong where I used the lens and I didn't use it properly, didn't test it before. And yeah, this was a lesson. And since then, I usually do proper tests beforehand and you should do the same. See you in the next video. Bye.